Hey, Brian, uh, we're ready for the uh, annual inspection. Okay. All right. Be right out. Meet you out there. All right, let's get this inspection started. What is this, man? Even the trash can's got dust on it. Take a seat, Lang. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today we're first going to be taking a look at the proper tech sweater. This is their full zip tech sweater. Um, I actually had a chance to try this on at SHOT Show and they just sent me one to evaluate and I'm, I'm actually, I actually like it um, as if that's some surprise, but um, I like the gray color the most. I think that's one of my favorites and um, I really love the knit. So this is a, a knit polyester and it's got reinforcement on wear areas. So uh, it is a 100% polyester sweater, but at the same time, so you can see kind of in the elbow areas or the forearms, um, as well as kind of in the back shoulder area and, and front area. Um, it's also got a little around the collar too. So, put it on here. It's got elastic on the uh, sleeves, which I really like, rather than a, like a fold over cuff type design. Um, I like that. This is actually the medium long. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I kind of wanted it to be a little longer, not only in the sleeves, but just in general. And you can see that it's still not super long on me, um, but it is, again, full zip. Um, it does have a YKK zipper on it, even though it's made in Bangladesh. So that's good. Um, again, like I mentioned, wear areas on the forearms. Covered with that, it's got a stand-up collar is what they advocate, but not a big fan of the pop collar myself. It's got a document pocket right here on a little small zipper that runs to about that length. And then one of my favorite features of this is, so it's got uh, two hand pockets here, but the internal pockets have a zipper in the front. So basically you can access your firearm while your hands are in your pockets. So for those of you that have been in the military, know what hands and pockets are, um, that way you can rock your hands in your pockets, but still get to your sidearm. So I think that's pretty cool. They call it their concealed carry uh, pocket access. So I'll show you kind of close up what's going on with that. But it's one of my favorite features. And if, you know, I've told myself if I was ever going to design clothing, it would, you know, have a feature like that. So it's cool to see that kind of thing. So it's got these internal zippers that are within the pocket. So once you put your hand in the pocket, you can pull down the zipper and then access that from interior, the interior. So um, it's a very cool feature, probably one of my favorite features on this. But uh, it's, even though it's 100% polyester, it does still keep you warm. I've been wearing it a couple of days now that it's getting a little chillier and actually kind of like the longer length in the sleeves too. Um, it fits me pretty well and the zipper is nice. It's easy to zip up, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of sweatshirts and things like that, the zipper can be difficult to, you know, to mate with the, or the, uh, the female zipper can be difficult to mate with the male and zip up, but um, it's got a pretty hefty YKK zipper on there that makes it pretty easy. So it's quick acquisition and you can zip it up pretty quick. So, and I'm not quite sure what these things are. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's like a, some kind of modified thumb loop or, I don't even know if I could get my thumb in there, but. At any rate, I'm not quite sure what those are for. I guess maybe the, um, oh, I know what it was for. Um, they had a over jacket that this mated with. I forgot about that. So I think that's the, uh, that's the, like a button on the inside of that jacket that holds this liner inside of it. I forgot that this is also a liner. So um, I do not know the name of that jacket, unfortunately, but I'll make sure I put it in the descriptions. One thing I forgot to talk about was the side zipper. So I'm not a big fan of these, but you know, I know law enforcement kind of uses that to access sidearms and things like that. Uh, you know, or you can access, you know, different things on your waistline with those. But I've never really, like I said, been a fan of uh, zippers on the side like that. Um, just because they always come open. 
Now these, the actual button snap that holds this together is pretty durable, so I haven't had an issue with that button popping off and causing the zipper to slide up, but um, I used to have a jacket, I think I reviewed quite a few years ago from Magnum, and it had side zippers and it didn't have any kind of closure like this, and what happened is that you know, every time I'd move around or go to sit down, the zipper eventually worked its way free, which you can see is happening you know, if you don't have that buttoned. You know, eventually that'll work its way loose. So, um, and one other thing that I did want to mention, you might have seen me messing with this, but it's a little hard to find that tiny zipper to open this pocket. And granted, you're not accessing a firearm or anything from this, so it's not something that's super timely to open, but you know, it just is a consideration that it's a little tiny zipper. So again, proper tech sweater. All right, guys, another product that we just got in is a pair of whiteout gloves from Mechanics. Now, I was just at SHOT Show recently and they handed me a pair of these gray or wolf gray gloves um, and I wanted to just walk through kind of the mechanics line because I have all three types of gloves that they manufacture, the three most popular styles that they have, um, at least for the tactical market. So this is the original. Um, they call them the original because of the um, just the original Velcro cuff design that they had kind of starting out with mechanics. They've also got a pull loop on them. And then, so they've got a, a palm here. There's no actual armor on the, the glove itself, but it does have this reinforced, um, I guess you could call it patent leather. I don't think it's actual leather, but uh, it's on the fingertips as well as the inside of the thumb. So these fit me pretty good as far as mediums go. This, that's what the size is here. Um, and the reason I point that out, um, is because the special edition whiteout gloves they just came out with, they just sent me a pair of these too, which I'm pretty excited about. I've been kind of putting together a, a snow ensemble, if you will, um, for a photo shoot we're gonna do soon. But so the medium on, on these is a little bit big on me. So if I kind of compare and contrast these, I do like them by the way, and this is their impact glove. So it's got kind of this rigid plastic armor or rubber armor um, on the fingertips on the, so the index finger does not have that. Um, it's the, the other three fingers and then it's across the, the knuckles and onto the back of the wrist there with the protective layer there of plat or rubber. So to kind of compare these here, these, these come all the way down to my fingertips, whereas these uh, have some space in them. So, I'm not sure if the sizing is just a little off on, on these new whiteout gloves. I know these were limited edition. I think they were limited to 175 pairs or something like that. And I'm not sure if that's each size or what, but um, at any rate, that's kind of the deal on these. Um, but again, going through their whole lineup here, impacts with the rubber kind of armor on the hand. These are the originals with the Velcro wrist closure and the pull loop as well. And then these are their fast fit gloves, which have a paracord loop. And I like these a lot. I, I kind of favor the fast fits, even though they don't have protection and they're not as, I guess, durable with the wraparound fingers as the original, because if you notice this, the, uh, the patent leather or, hope I'm not calling that the wrong thing, but anyway, the, um, the actual leather-like material that's on the palm does not wrap around the outside of the fingers. Um, just around a little bit on the, the uh, meteor thumb there. So I like these because they're, they're easy, kind of easy to ditch, easy to don. Um, and I've just always kind of been drawn to the, the fast fit line. But, you know, knuckle protection, if that's a big thing for you, uh, impacts are probably the way to go with that. So the also, also at SHOT Show, they were releasing, um, I believe, a redesigned... I think black is, they kind of revamp that for the tactical market as well as uh, woodland camo. So they have woodland camo now. Uh, but I think the big focus was the, the wolf gray color they released as well as the woodland camo. And then of course the special edition whiteout they just had. All right, guys, welcome to questions over Boss Coffee.
So first one comes from Jacob on Facebook who asks, would you be able to run us through the headlamps you've evaluated and settled on? I would be happy to, and it's quite extensive, so I apologize if this is a little long-winded, but um, I did want to go through the, the genesis of what I have had over the years. So there's a few of these I have at home that I don't have up here, but for the most part, I think this kind of encompasses a pretty wide array of, of different headlamps that I've worn over the years. So um, I started out with just a, you know, elastic headband and I clip one of these on here. No, I'm kidding. Um, but the first one that I started out with was probably this big old Princeton tech. This is uh, double A's. It was huge. Um, this thing is, you know, it looks like I'm going coal mining or something like that. So um, that's what I started out with. And I remember kind of my first backpacking trip using this when I was, God, I don't know, I was probably in my teens or something like that. But um, it was bulky. I mean, obviously it weighed a ton. The strap was just ridiculous on it. But uh, it was made by Princeton Tech, made in the US. Um, and most of these are. Um, then I kind of graduated, I guess, to Petzl's. So, um, this is their Tika, I believe. So this is also kind of a, a third strap light. I've never really liked the, uh, the third strap option that goes over the top. I think it's kind of uh, um, useless in my opinion. Uh, I've never really liked it, but um, the Tika had some options that weren't on other headlamps. That's kind of why I made the switch to this. So, I mean, obviously I was tired of using this kind of thing too. Um, and this was kind of, I think my first purchase uh, when I got into really kind of being outdoors and knowing that I needed a headlamp. And I always wanted a red lens, and that was one, that's my big requirement. I always want red um, when I'm out the outdoors. I don't always want to white light everybody and light up everything that I'm looking at. So this had a flip down red filter on it and their Tika. I think it was three LEDs, and this is probably one of the first LED headlamps that kind of came out. That's one thing I didn't mention on this. This is incandescent, so this is actually a bulb or a few you know, unscrew this for those of you that don't know that. Um, it's got an actual filament bulb that's inside of there that has to be replaced if you dropped it and, you know, just like a standard household bulb. So that was one of the drawbacks and limitations to the, you know, to that back in the day too is, you know, not only did you have to carry around a headlamp, but you had to carry around a spare bulb. So it's not just the batteries that could go out, it might be the bulb too. So. Um, obviously, I'm glad we've all kind of moved past that incandescent phase, and even on the tactile handheld flashlights, where we've moved well beyond that too. Um, back in the old Surefire days, you used to have to carry around spare bulbs too. Um, so anyway, I like this because of that red lens, um, and also one of the big features when these came out is that you could you could actually remove this from you know the actual uh, strap, the head strap. So by doing this. This is just one of the clips that I never use, obviously, because it looks brand new. Uh, but you could, you know, have this on your belt or your gear or something, and then, you know, just clip that on, and then you still had the pivot ability of the light. But now you're, uh, now you're on something. Now you're on a different platform. So the modularity was a big thing back then. And there, try to get that off. And then, uh, you know, head, you know, uh, helmets were also big. They they sold this disc with it too, and. You know, you could mate that to the, the disc and have that on the side of your helmet and, you know, pivot that wherever you need to. So you could angle that headlamp wherever you, you wanted to, really. So that was kind of a big thing that was going on for a while is, you know, headlamps had that modularity. And then they, Petzl kind of moved into their uh, Tactica. So this is the Tica, this is the Tactica. And I believe this was, uh, if I remember, double A's as well. I wanted to look, but... You could uh, remove it from this bracket by hopefully not breaking it you, by just removing it like that, and you could put it onto something like this. So you could also have that modularity I was just talking about with the the Tika, um, or you had this type of deal too. So um, let me open this up. So that was one of the downsides of the the Tac Tika. So it's triple A's, three triple A's is that you actually had to remove it from this backer to access the battery door and things like that. So as upgrades started happening, um, I guess in the headlamp industry, um, you kind of got away from having to remove the headlamp to, to access the battery door, um, especially on things like, uh, so as you moved into, 
like when Princeton Tech developed the Remix and then eventually the Remix Pro and things like that, which is where I'm at in my headlamp um, selection now. Um, the battery door is you know, now accessible on the side without having to remove the actual light assembly from the head strap. Um, I was using a, a Petzl E-Light for a long time. I used to swear by these things. They, you know, at one time I had one in every bag in the house. Um, so one was in my, I guess my bolt bag, one was in my truck, one was in uh, with my kit. They were super lightweight um, and then they started upgrading them to have this little whistle on the end. Um, so I thought that was a cool function too, is the, the, uh, the head strap adjustment, you know, was also a whistle, you know, and they have a little SOS code on there, which, you know, it's cool, but um, I like this because you could change from, you know, white LEDs all the way to, to the red, the single red when you rotate it at the other direction. So the only problem with these is that I found that uh, they're just not powerful enough. The, the LEDs weren't strong, they weren't bright. Um, I needed something more, so that's kind of how I found the Remix Pro, and this is powered by a 123. They also make the regular Remix, which is three AAAs, um, so if you're more accustomed to AAAs, you can go that route, but again, single 123 battery rather than AAAs. Um, I've always tried to do as much as I can to have one single kind of battery with all my kit that I'm wearing, but it never works out that way. I'm always carrying you know, either double A's or triple A's or 123's or some mixture of all three or just one. So, um, at any rate, that's something to think about too. Anything about a headlamp, what do you already have in your existing um, things like that too. Um, and then, you know, I also even tried like little clip lights like this. I, you know, had one of these on my hat or whatever and, um, you know, just little lights like that or this is a, a small one. I think this is from an old Cry Precision hat that I had that had loop Velcro on the, the brim. So you know, you'd stick that to the brim and then now you have your, your headlamp. But these little LEDs aren't that powerful either. So that's kind of the limitation there. It always brought me back to you know, the Remix Pro. Um, and the one that I run is, you can get the, these in multiple combinations, but the one I run is a, a two-stage red LED. So it's got a bright, so a you know, regular red, bright red, and then if you hold it down, you get white light, and then if you hit it again, you get even brighter white. So it's like a four-stage light, um, and I really like it. Um, I've had this single 123 in here for a long time. I only use lithiums. Um, I, I've tried to switch to lithium everything with my batteries. These are Surefire lithiums that are in here, um, and they last forever. I mean, I've taken this on multiple trips in the last couple of years, and I, I think it's been at least two years since I replaced the battery in here. So. That's a little run through. Um, we didn't really talk filters other than the red filter, but um, I always liked this little thing on the Tactica, which was a, a spare filter carrier. So you could pull this out and get a spare little blue filter that you could pop in here and replace uh, with the red. And I always just appreciated that. I've always been a, a filter junkie back from the days of the old angle head flashlights. I don't know how many of you guys know this, but you know they always came with colored discs so what you do you know you pop your D batteries in here but then you'd unscrew this you drop a little filter disc in there and then you screw that back on and now your flashlight's red so but old angle heads had that same incandescent bulb that I was talking about so you know you would still had a lamp assembly like that and a bulb that would burn out um, but one thing I always thought was cool in these is that underneath the spring for the battery door, they always had a spare bulb under there, which I thought was pretty cool. So hopefully that's uh, you enjoyed the run through on that, Jacob. So let's move on to the next question. All right. So the next question comes from Twitter. And uh, I guess we don't have a name. We don't have a name, huh? What's his name? Twitter? No, Gear Question. Gear Question is the name? That? But that's his name? Yeah. The name's Gear Question. Yeah. I think he created the account to ask a question. Wow. Hey, more power to All right. So I want to get into day hiking in Florida and grow into three to five day trips. Assuming I have no gear, what do I need to get started? So for the sake of time, I won't get into pulling all my stuff out and actually going through each thing, but I will recap some stuff that I've talked about in the past. If you reference the Mammoth Sniper Challenge, and I went through some packing that I did for that competition, um, 
And I'll go through some descriptive ways that I use to organize my gear, and that's probably the best thing I can give to you other than kind of looking at that stuff because I didn't really go through it in this light back when I was reviewing that um, on previous gear tasting. But the way I kind of divide things up when I'm thinking about packing, and I guess this is kind of my logic behind um, the, way I, the way I think when I pack, is that I divide things into systems. So um, I have you know, the pack system, which is the overall pack that contains all the gear. Um, then I have a sleep system, um, which is, consists of my sleeping bag, my ground pad, my pillow, whatever I'm using um, directly for sleeping. That could be sleeping clothes too, if I have specific clothes that I sleep in. Typically I'll always try to bring a pair of sleep socks, so a pair of wool socks for that. Um, then I divide further into, um, I have to look at my notes because I wrote some, uh, like a cook system too. The cook system's big, so everything you need to cook with. This doesn't include food. This is just basically, you know, your um, jet boil, whatever kind of cooking system you're utilizing to boil water. Um, the fuel you're using, a scrubby, a little greeny weenie to clean out the um, whatever kind of bowl or cup you're using to put food into. Um, that includes your utensil, your spork, things like that, and a lighter. Um, anything you need to actually cook the food that you brought. So think of it that way too. Um, and then you get into food itself. So um, make sure you're looking at the days that you'll be out, the meals that you'll want to cook, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks to plan for all that kind of stuff. Um, I've really been an advocate lately in the last couple of years of using dry bags and having multiple dry bags within the overall backpack. So instead of using like a, a rain cover or something like that and just having a gypsy camp within the bag, um, I like to subdivide those into you know, different dry bags. So I won't just have one dry bag that contains everything that was in the pack. I will try to subdivide that into multiple dry bags to kind of help facilitate a little bit of organization inside a big cavernous pack. Um, and also it gives you a good way to grab something and go as well. So that's kind of the whole bolt bag concept. I won't really get into that, but that's, that's what that's about. So it's about having a smaller backpack within a larger backpack that you can just grab and go with. And, you know, if you had to jet and, you know, ditch all your heavy stuff. So um, then you have, uh, we talked about pack system, shelter system, sleep system, cook system, clothing, food. And then I kind of have a miscellaneous category. Um, that's kind of stuff like a dop kit, so all your hygiene stuff, um, toothpaste, toothbrush, hand sanitizer, soap, a washcloth, things like that that you might need uh, would all be within that miscellaneous category. And then there's, you know, hiking poles, um, you know, and then there's also kind of, uh, kind of an optional category as well. So optional stuff that I would kind of include like vapor barrier socks or something if it gets, if it rains. You may even put your rain gear in an optional category, um, just because if you can predict the weather, um, you know, if you're a weatherman or whatever, uh, or you read the farmer's almanac, you might know what's going on. But at any rate, um, you always want to be prepared for rain. So even if I don't have full on rain gear, I'll always take like some frog togs or something that's lightweight with me um, as a backup, just in case it decides to rain. So. Um, and one thing I would push you to do too, if you're just getting into this, um, obviously a three to five day trip really isn't a day hike. That's a full on backpacking experience um, because you'll, uh, the way I read the question, you'll be away from civilization or your vehicle or something like that for days at a time. Um, you really, weight really is really an issue. I can't stress weight enough. Get yourself a good scale that can measure ounces and really weigh out everything. Look at what you're putting into your pack. Don't, don't put a bunch of crap like home alone hope you didn't just pack crap jeff like really you need to make sure that you have a uh, spit on the tail uh make sure you have everything that you need but you know really evaluate your kit so what i like to say too is at the end of every experience or every trip that you go on to take everything out of your pack divide it into three categories what did i use um, what did i bring and not use and then what did i bring that i didn't necessarily use but that was actually key for me to have so you know, a first aid kit or actual something to save a life with something that you knew you needed to have, but it's just kind of a weight that, you know, you couldn't really deal without. I mean, there's ways to kind of cut weight on stuff like that too, but just look at it that way, you know, make sure you're, you're taking everything out at the end of the, the trip too and evaluating it. So hopefully that helped you out and thanks for the question. All right, guys, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. And remember, if you have any questions, be sure to use the pound tag Gear Tasting on social media. 
and we will get them answered. And if you like gear tasting and you like supporting what we're doing, make sure you check out our crew leader membership and allow us to give you back something in return. Now would be a good time to leave.